This is Jared Horak, and this is my latest road to the 2024 Kentucky Derby video. And in this video, I'll analyze the Grade 2 Risen Star Stakes at Fairgrounds, Saturday, February 17th. If you're interested in going over and reading uh, my Kentucky Derby and Kentucky Oaks reports at todaysracingdigest.com, when you get to their front page, click on the Kentucky Derby tab. You'll see that at the top near the left on their homepage, and that will take you over to the Digest Derby page. And there you'll be able to read all of my Kentucky Derby and Kentucky Oaks reports. I just updated my Kentucky Derby and Kentucky Oaks reports earlier this week. So you can read those there. And if you're interested in a free complete digest, from now through the end of April, you can get one free complete digest by using promo code DERBY5424. So go over to todaysracingdigest.com for details. Also in the description in this video, I will provide a link uh, to that complete digest page. And then also I'll provide uh, that promo code as well. And now we'll get into the analysis of this video. 14th race at Fairgrounds, Saturday, February 17th, 2024. Grade two, $400,000 Risen Star Stakes for three-year-olds traveling a mile and an eighth on the main track. 7.17 p.m. Eastern is the post time and 50 points to the winner for this Kentucky Derby points race. And now the points races are getting more serious. We started with 10 points to the winner races, then we jumped up to 20, and now this Risen Star Stakes is the first 50 points for the winner. So this is basically a win and you're in for the Kentucky Derby. Tizzy Indy is breaking from the inside post for trainer Keith Desormo. In the LeComp Stakes last time, he was fifth, beaten 13 lengths. He was 61 to one that day. So he's really gonna have to elevate his game here because he was already uh, facing uh, horses like this, like Track Phantom, he'll be facing him again. Track Phantom defeated him by 13 lengths last time. He's really going to have to improve uh, to threaten this group. Awesome Ruta is next. Uh, this one is one for six lifetime with a second and two thirds. He broke his maiden by nine lengths at Louisiana Downs, second time out in a sprint race, stalking the pace. He was in the Jean Lafitte Stakes at Delta Downs in the slop at seven furlongs in November. He was second by a neck. Since then, in the optional claiming ranks, he disappointed. Fifth by 11, sixth by five, and then he was third in the slop last time out. Uh, so he's one uh, stretching out in distance. Could end up being forwardly placed, but he, he's going to have to really run better. Honor Marie hasn't been seen, seen since winning the Kentucky Jockey Club Stakes, a grade two at Churchill Downs last fall, when he rallied from last place in an eight horse field. So he went last to first at eight to one odds that day to win nicely under Rafael Bejarano. He's going to ride back in here. This horse has run three times with two wins and a second. He's got a nice late kick. He's going to need some pace help. Sierra Leone is next for trainer Chad Brown. He's currently my top-ranked Kentucky Derby contender. They paid $2.3 million for this son of Gunrunner, and he was uh, starting out in a one-mile, one-turn race at Aqueduct last fall, and he sat back in fifth place. He was only a couple lengths back, but the pace wasn't quick. So it was a slow, early, fast, late maiden race, and he was able to uh, emerge in the stretch and win that race by a length and a quarter under Manny Franco. The runner-up was the next out winner. Sierra Leone made his second career start in the grade two Remsen Stakes. That was a mile and an eighth in the mud on December 2nd at Aqueduct, a speed favoring track that day. We saw seven of 10 races. The pace setter won and a door knock was the pace center in the Remsen Stakes. And Sierra Leone rallied from 10th and last. He was 12 lengths back early. He was by himself and last. He made a big run in the stretch to take the lead. But then Doorknock came back on him and he won it by a nose. Four lengths back to the show finisher. Drum roll, please. And he was a next out stakes winner. Uh, so that Remsen stakes effort was good in his second career start. Again, he's one that's going to need some pace help. He's adding blinkers in here. He's worked eight times at Pace and Park for this race. Moonlight for trainer Todd Pletcher. $285,000 son of Audible, missed by a neck in his career debut in a turf route, moved to the main track, originally scheduled for the turf uh, in his second career start, and he won a, a maiden race there uh, by eight lengths as the favorite. And then in his third start, the street sent stakes. He was second in that race behind Liberal Arts. And then in the Remsen stakes, he was fourth. He was rallying from off the pace. As I said, it was a speed favoring track. He's another one that's going to try to get involved from off the pace. Real men violin for trainer Kenny McKeek. One for six lifetime with four seconds and a third. So he's always in the top three, or at least he was last year. 
He broke his maiden in his fifth career start in the slop, a one-turn mile at Churchill Downs in October, and he defeated track phantom that day. And then um, last time in the Kentucky Jockey Club Stakes, he stalked the pace. He was second best in there. So making his first start since November, he does have a bullet workout at Fairgrounds on February 2nd, five furlongs and 59 and change, best of 31. Hall of Fame for trainer Steve Asmussen, a $1.4 million son of Dunrunner, making just his third career start. Seven furlong debut, he broke 10th and then 11 horse field, and he rallied from off the pace to finish second in his second career start. He stretched out to a mile and a 16th, and he dominated. That race was at Fairgrounds on January 20th. He stalked, he led, he pulled clear, and he kept pulling away, and he broke his maiden by 10 lengths. He did have Lasix last time. He loses that here. He was the favorite in both starts. I would expect that he's going to take a lot of action in here, and he probably will be forwardly placed. Catching freedom for trainer Brad Cox. This is a son of Constitution, and they paid $575,000 for this one. And right off the bat, he came out and he broke his maiden from off the pace as the favorite by almost four lengths in a one at a, at a, a one turn mile at Churchill Downs. The runner up was the next out winner, and Catching Freedom was the favorite in the second career start. But he ended up finishing a flat fourth there, and then in the Smarty Jones Stakes, he broke through with a Kentucky Derby points race victory rallying from eighth place in a nine-horse field to win going away by more than two lengths. He's going to be coming from off the pace in this race. He seems to be on the upswing. Cardinal is next for trainer Todd Pletcher. Bobby and Pratt will ride this one. And he was able to stalk the pace from post 10 in an 11-horse field and win his sixth furlong debut at Gulfstream Park. He was the two-to-one favorite. He won by a length and three quarters. He stretched out second time out in an optional claiming race. He set the pace. He ended up finishing second. Change of command was the winner there, and Cardinal was more than uh, six lengths clear of the show finisher, and change of command came back, and he disappointed in the Sam F. Davis stakes last time out. The Silience is next for trainer Bill Mott. This is a son of Into Mischief, and he's one that faced some good horse horses earlier in his career. He faced Locked and Drumroll Please in his debut. They were both next out winners, and then Resilience uh, split Stronghold and Track Phantom when finishing second in his second career start, stalking the pace. His third start, Nash ran off the screen to break his maiden by 10. Resilience was third, beaten 11 lengths. And then uh, in his last race, a two-turn maiden race at Gulfstream Park. On January 1st, he added Lasix. He was the favorite. He stalked, and he was much the best by more than four lengths. He does lose Lasix. He could get a decent stalking trip in here, and he seems to be getting better. Track Phantom, the one to catch in here. He, in his first two starts in one turn miles, he was third and second. Uh, Resilience uh, finished in front of him in his debut. The old man Violin uh, defeated him second time out, but then he's been a different horse since they stretched him around two turns. Maiden special weight at Churchill went uh, basically wire to wire on November 25th. The Gunrunner Stakes, he dueled. He was able to win there by a length and a quarter over Sneed and Nash, and he defeated Nash again in the grade three Le Comp Stakes when he got out there and controlled the pace. But his speed figure did dip last time. So now he's got to go a mile and an eighth. He does look like he should be all over the pace. They paid a half a million for this son of Quality Road. Joel Rosario rides back. He is two for two with him. He's going to put him on the lead, and I wouldn't be surprised if he went all the way. B Dancer uh, is next for trainer Dallas Stewart, second time starter. In his career debut at six furlongs, he was able to press the pace and win nicely by a length. It was an 11-horse field. January 20th at the fairgrounds. He's got to run a bit faster in here. Uh, nothing wrong with that debut, but he is giving up uh, some experience and some route experience and stakes experience uh, in this race in his first start against winners. So Track Phantom looks like the one to catch. There's different horses in here that I think could perform well. Resilience certainly could. Uh, catching Freedom uh, for trainer Brad Cox. You have to consider him a contender. Hall of Fame for trainer Steve Asmussen. Uh, he is Track Phantom's stable mate. Uh, maybe even horses like Real Men Violin, uh, Honor Marie. None of those horses are really out of it, depending on how the race shape plays out. Uh, but Track Phantom's the one to catch, but I'm hoping that one horse does catch him. My top choice and my top-ranked Kentucky Derby contender right now, Sierra Leone. He's going to be my top choice in here. He showed a lot of promise last year. They paid a lot for this horse. They're putting blinkers on in this spot. I think basically maybe to keep him a little closer and a little more focused since he did lose uh, to Dornock after taking the lead last time. I think maybe he lost focus in the stretch. 
they're going to put blinkers on uh, to keep him focused and on running and finishing off his race. And I think from off the pace, Sierra Leone might be able to catch Track Phantom at this mile in an eighth distance. So track, uh, Sierra Leone over Track Phantom uh, in the Risen Star Stakes. And then I, um, as for my third choice, uh, Resilience uh, for trainer Bill Mott. I think he's got a decent shot in here as well. Maybe from a little bit off the pace, possibly getting a jump on the deep closers. But I think this one's about Sierra Leone in the Risen Star Stakes. 50 points up to the winner here. Basically a win and you're in for the Kentucky Derby. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment if you like this horse racing content. And I'll be back and I'm going to be doing the Sunland Derby this week. I'm going to do some video shorts. Uh, so check my shorts as I'm going to be doing uh, some Kentucky Dirt, Kentucky Oaks uh, points races uh, on my YouTube channel. So check those out as well. And until I see you next time, good luck at the races. <music>